do today is I'm going to show you all the products that we're going to use in conjunction with the shave. Cool. Uh, but this is going to be a mock, so obviously I'm not going to do anything. So what I say is, is that water is not required for the first step, but yeah. it does make it so you have to use less because it helps you distribute the first product a little more. So the first product is an oil. So uh, basically what we're gonna do here is this creates a layer of resistance that promotes the glide of the razor as you can oh, see cool. with the water beating yeah. up. And this is not a substitution for shaving cream, it's an addition to it. So this is gonna go on before. We're gonna take our brush, we're gonna get it wet with some warm water. Okay. Not too much water because you don't want it really sudsy lather with a bunch of bubbles. So yeah. we're gonna shake the excess water out. I also don't recommend getting it too hot because these yeah. are natural bristles. So basically it's, it's uh, made out of uh, badger hair. Oh, uh, badger hair? Mm -hmm. So badger hair insulates heat, but it's very delicate on the skin. Yeah. But uh, for this case, it's gonna help us generate a small amount of lather. So about like a first digit. I didn't have that much left in the container, so it yeah. kind of got spread. But really you only need about this much, about okay. your, of your first digit. And we wanna put it onto the tip of the brush, not into the base because we don't wanna have to distort the shape of the brush to get to it. We okay. just wanna go in small circles on the area that you're going to be shaving. So what is this gonna do? This is gonna do three beneficial things. This is going to, one, create an uh, actual microstructure with the lather itself. This is what shaving cream was intended to do, but okay. a lot of people expect it to protect you from the aggression, the sharpness of the razor. It is not designed to do that. What it's designed to do, as you're seeing, it's turning into this structure that's holding the hairs up, so when you make passes, the hair doesn't flex and weigh and give way with the, the pass of the blade. Okay. So another thing we're doing as a byproduct of generating a lather in the head of the brush, we're preparing the area by cleaning all the dead skin cells off so that your tools could last longer and the cut is closer and cleaner. And so really what I'm doing is I'm looking for a consistency on your hand that's similar to a yogurt, something okay. like this consistency. Okay. Once I have that, I'm going to take the lather that I've actually generated in the head of the brush out. Okay. This is why I don't prefer using the puck of soap, but this puck of soap is not bad. This is just quicker since you said you want to be a barber. Yeah. So where you would have done this before, you would have been wasting your time lathering in the bowl. Oh, okay. So that this way you just save time just doing straight on the face, and there's actually a lot of beneficial reasons to pass with the direction that the hair is growing to get rid of the bulk of the length. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to, you can apply more oil, but the concept here is, is that there's so much product in the head of the brush. This is another reason that the brush is really good is because it turns a little bit into a lot. So what I did was is, there was still some in there, yeah. but when I was making rotations on your hand, it was getting a little stiff. Yeah. So I can tell that the lather was really full, but I wanna make more lather. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm gonna make a second pass. So this time I'm gonna go against the grain, but I'm gonna make some more shaving cream in the head of the brush, pull it back out, and again, put it back on your hand as if we did that first pass. Okay. This time it should be a, bit, a little bit easier though, but the concept is that little bit, that yeah. first digit, would be enough to do a woman's legs. Wow. And a lot of uh, men don't have that much surface area, so this yeah. is dramatically more than enough. Now the concept here is, is that it's very thick. The, the idea would be is, is that when you're shaving the face, it's gonna stay localized, yeah. and when you get through half of the shave, you're not gonna have to apply more product. That's very You know, true. like when yeah. it deflates mm -hmm. and then you're just wasting more product. So the concept here being is that a little bit goes a long way, and in addition to the brush with the exfoliation, it could make your tools last longer. Now I'm just put this to the side for a second. You can wash your hands off. All right, thank you. Perfect. All right, so what we did so far is we did the oil, we yeah. did a shaving cream, we did a mock as if we were gonna shave. So this is the post product. This is what we're gonna do after we're done shaving. Okay. So a lot of times, a lot of men's products after they're done shaving contain alcohol in them. Yeah. Usually it's to increase the shelf life of the product because it makes it antibacterial and they assume that you're gonna be nicking yourself. So it yeah. also is antibacterial for the skin. But what we're trying to avoid is harsh irritants and that's what alcohol is. Okay. Alcohol creates redness, that's inflammation. The inflammation can pretty much encourage ingrown hairs. Okay. The inflamed follicle promotes that the hair cannot penetrate, rebounds mm -hmm. on itself. You're dealing with either razor burn or an ingrown hair. So nice. what I put on your hand is a glycerin-based solution. Glycerin is larger than the pores in your skin, so if you're ever worried about making a greasy mess on yeah. your face, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, shea butter is really good because even if you don't want to use it after you're done shaving to reduce the redness, you can put it directly on the beard hair. It'll be a stubble balm or a beard softener. Okay. So that's what I recommend. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. And then while that sets into your hand, yeah. so it's a little satin right now. I'm going to tell you how to clean the brush. Okay. So the brush is really easy to clean, but there's a few little key elements here. 
small circles ensures that all the product is out of it. Now the product is not so much what I'm worried about, the water is. This is essentially uh, a paintbrush. A paintbrush. So it's, it's um, you have some animal hairs that are set into a base with an adhesive. Yeah. So a lot of people have, we store them how we have them on display, where the hairs are facing up. This is a hollow well. So this is just gonna get filled up with water. Okay. The water will break down the bindings, you'll lose hair. Oh, wow. So what we try to say is, is just store them in a manner to where the hairs are facing downward. The, the, basically what I do is put it back to its original shape. And that's why you guys have those hook things. Uh-huh, and then hang them. So Perfect. for the razor, it might be a little bit aesthetic, yeah. but for the, for the brush, it's absolutely imperative. It's basically what's gonna make this tool last a very long time. Otherwise, one, the bindings will break down, you lose the hair, or two, it can cultivate mold and it'll have a really bad smell. Okay, perfect. Yay, thank you for letting me film that. Yeah.